Hello everyone, welcome back. In the continuation of Spring tutorial videos, today we will cover life cycle of Spring Beans. We have already covered many topics on Spring Framework, like what is a Spring Framework, how IOC and dependency injection work. We have also seen what is a bean factory and application context. And most recently, uh, we have done one detailed video on Spring Beans. So if you are interested in learning any of those topics, I request you to please check this playlist where all the videos are available. So before we start, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any new update. If you like the video, please share it across with your dev community. And for any kind of feedback, do comment in the comment section. Now, without any further delay, let's start. Now, to understand the complete life cycle of spring beans, there are few topics that you should already be knowing. We can say these are the prerequisites for this topic. You should know the basics of spring framework, basics of spring beans and spring IOC container. So if you are not clear about any of these videos, I request you to please check out the playlist from top right corner of your screen. And once done, you can continue with this video. Now the life cycle of any object means when and how it is created, how it behaves throughout its life and when and how it is destroyed. Similarly, the bean life cycle refers to when and how the bean is instantiated, what actions it has performed until it lives and when and how it is destroyed. Bean life cycle is managed by spring container. When we run a program, first of all, the spring container gets started. After that, the container creates the instances of beans as per the request and then the dependencies are injected. And finally, the bean is destroyed when the spring container is getting closed. So if we want to execute some code on the bean instantiation and just after closing the spring container, then we can write that code inside the custom init methods and custom destroy methods. The following process shows the complete flow of beans lifecycle. It started with the container and then bean is instantiated. After that, the dependencies are checked and injected as per the configuration in the XML or in the annotation based configuration. And if there is any custom init method provided, that will be executed. And then it will perform the operations in its lifecycle. And in the end, when container is getting closed, the custom destroy method, if we have defined, that will be called. And any cleanup activities can be done in that custom destroy method. Spring provides three ways to implement the life cycle of a bean. In order to understand these three ways, let's take an example. In this example, we will write init and destroy method for our bean to print some message on the console. And these methods are called on the start and close of Spring Container. These ways are using XML configuration. Second one is using Java code level implementation. And the third one is using annotations. Now let's see how to do it using XML. Before configuring the custom init and destroy method, we need to create those methods in mybean class as given on the screen. Once these are created, then we need to configure these details in XML. Here you can see in the bean definition, we have these two properties, init method and destroy method, where we can define the recently created method in the bean. So when the bean is instantiated by container, then as a custom init method, this init method will be called, which is defined in the bean. And similarly, the destroy method will be called just before the container is getting closed. If you have any doubt in this, please do let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, let's move to the second way, which is using Java code. For the created beans to call custom init and destroy method on the startup of Spring Container, we need to implement two interfaces. There are two in interfaces that we need to implement. One is initializing bean, other one is disposable bean. After implementing these two interfaces, we need to override their methods First one is after property set and second one is destroy. So after property set, that will be your custom init method and destroy method will be your custom destroy methods. So whatever logic we write in these two methods, that will be invoked 
once the container is getting started or it is getting closed here you can see in the xml we don't need to define what method we need to call because those are already taken care by implementing those two interfaces and overriding the required methods so in the xml configuration we just need to provide the definition of bean that contains id and class of the bean or any uh, wiring if it is required for the dependency part the third way is using annotations here we neither need to add any additional configuration in xml nor we have to implement any interfaces using this approach we can straight away use two annotations we have post construct to define the custom in it and at the rate pre destroy to define the custom destroy method rest of the implementation will remain same so what we have done here on any method if we have used post construct that will act as an custom init method and on any method where we have used at the rate pre destroy that method will act as a destroy custom destroy method now let's see all these ways in actual execution in one of the ID so I will be using spring tool suit as an ID so here I have already created three different projects one where we I have implemented the spring lifecycle using XML second one where I have implemented using Java code and in the third one I have implemented using annotation now let's see what configurations I have done in the XML one so here this is my bean so in the my bean itself I have only created two methods one name in it you can name it anything so here I have just named it as init method and second one is destroy method now once that configuration is complete in my beans configuration file in the bean definition itself I have mentioned the init method parameter and I have provided name as init so what it will do it will check the name init method in the my bean and it will call it on the creation of the bean and similarly we have destroy method attribute where I have specified destroy so it will check if there is any method named destroy in my bean and on closure of the spring container this method will be called and in our main application program what I have done I have created an instance of configurable application context so using this I have also added one more annotation here which is to import the resource that means it will pick up the bean definitions from my beans config.xml so whenever this context is getting created or the container is getting started the resources will be created depending on the configuration available in my beans config.xml and once that is done then this method init method will be called and next to that I'm just closing this context that means we are closing the spring container here and at that time the destroy method should be called because that is defined inside the XML configuration now let's try to execute this project then we'll be able to see if those methods are getting called or not so so here you can see uh, when it was instantiated XML bean has been instantiated and this is the exact implementation of init method which I have given and similarly just before closing the container XML container has been closed this destroy method has been called now let's check all these things for the second method which was using Java code here itself so my bean in the my bean itself what we have done we have implemented the initializing bean and a disposable bean and as a result what we need to do we need to override a couple of methods here one is after property set which is similar to the init method and second one is destroy so here I have just printed Java and the same thing bean has been instantiated and container has been closed and if you see in the XML configuration now we don't need to define what init method or destroy method we need to call why because in the bean itself we have implemented that and depending on the life stage of the bean a particular method will automatically be called and similar configuration I have done in the main class here just created a configurable application context and closed it now let's execute this project and also see the output so here what I'm expecting uh, this should be printed first when the container is getting started and this should be printed in the end when we are closing the container now let me run this as a spring boot application 
so here you can see this has been printed java bean has been instantiated and java container has been closed if you have any doubts how to do these configurations or if you are facing any issue please do let me know i will try to help you out now let's try to check the last method where minimum configuration was required so here you can see i have only defined the bean definition like what is the bean id and class of the bean and uh, in the my bean itself also i don't need to implement any uh, interfaces like we did in our second wave in the java code section where we have implemented two beans and then we need to override few methods so here we will be making use of annotations first annotation was post construct that is uh, similar to defining an init method or custom init methods so on top of which, whichever method this annotation is used that method will act as a custom init method so during the container startup or bean initialization this method will be called and whatever logic is written inside this method that will be executed and on the similar note we have uh, at the rate pre-destroy method that will act as a custom destroy method so during the container closure this method will be called so let's execute this uh, project also now let me run it as a Spring Boot application. So we will be expecting these two print statements here. So yes, here we can see annotation bean has been instantiated and annotations container has been closed. So using all these three methods, I have demonstrated it to you how we can uh, control the life cycle of a bean and inject any business logic or any other code that we want during a particular stage of a bean itself. Just to summarize, we have covered what are spring beans and their different stages of their life inside the container itself or specifically spring IOC container. We have also seen how we can manage the life cycle using three different methods. First one was using XML, then through Java code by implementing a couple of interfaces and third one using annotations. So personally, if you ask me, I would prefer the annotations way because that will make your code look more cleaner and concise. So that was it for uh, life cycle of spring beans. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try to answer all of them. Also share this video with your dev community. Until then, thanks for watching. Keep learning.